Well, as you can see, we've made it to our destination. There's the dock doors. I'm, over, I'm way back there. The way it works is this place. You got to go park over there by that fence. And go walk back a mile to the guard shed. Give you a door. And, uh... Oh, he's got his, his little thing, hood lights lit up there on top. They give you a door. And, uh... Then you got to walk a mile and a half to put the papers in there. Come on, ain't that fun? That's a blast. All right, yeah, we made it. Made it down here last night. Now, uh, as I explained before, uh, there's another Cargill truck. Right there. I guess he may be going to the door to the right. So I'm like, I don't think there's any more doors on my side because there's a truck beside me. And there's a truck over here. And I don't think there's any more doors. Yeah, I think he's going on the right side of that Mac. Do what I did, pull up and around that concrete barrier. Now turn to the left. There you go. See, that's what I had to do, but I will turn to the left um, right by that concrete barrier right there. And uh, yeah, that one right there. To the left. I had to back into here. Tight. Pretty tight, got it in one shot though. We're down here in Houston, Houston, the 30th of March, and uh, yeah, we thought we were going to have to leave the day before yesterday because we had a drop on this load in Dallas, but that drop got canceled. <clears throat> That's fine with me. They did not inform me of any price change on the load, so I think I'm still getting paid the full amount besides the drop, the uh, cost for the drop, which is like $100 for an extra job extra draw you know so so we went ahead and went to the house instead of drive down to Dallas and then yesterday I guess we left around 3 30 3 30 we got down here about 1 30 or 2 something like that found a spot to park at I'm not gonna say where but I did find a spot. This grocer supply down here in Houston, uh, over here by Almeda and 288, there's not a lot of spots to park near. <laughs> You've got the Loves off 45 to the north, about eight miles, and this is to the south. There's, there's nowhere to park down here, but I did find a spot. I did do that. Now he may have to blindside it because he is coming back. He may be have that have that last door over there. I may have to get out and help him. I got out and helped him a little bit, but he didn't need any help. You know, he he got that blindside in one shot, and uh, we just got through opening those doors. That owner operator he uh, backed that blind spot right into that door. Come out. Which is a good deal. Now look at this Pete over here. Now, that's a good setup. See if you got a heavy truck like that, which you know I don't mine might be heavier than his, I don't know, but let me clear this windshield out. Oh dang it, that's gonna smear on me. But he's got split axle, you didn't see that. And looks like a prime black with blue fenders. Pretty nice. Pre emission. Pre emission truck. And I talked to this uh, owner operator. He got a load out of Skyler. 
Nebraska, and this is his uh, third drop. The passenger side is smearing off. I may have to spray it. It just started raining. But, uh... Yeah, he's got it. He's backing it in. Back it in, driver. It's tight, but you can do it. Come on. It's a tight fit, but you can do it. Driver. Yeah, he's got it. Anyways, we found a spot down here to uh, park in. I'm not going to say where. It's a secret. And uh, made our way over here this morning. This is pretty tight because my, my next load is a broker load I loaded in Humble, Humble, Texas, taking the plane view. And uh, I think GS is going to make me uh, late on this pickup because they're not, they don't get in a hurry over here. You know, it takes, it takes 30 to 40, 45 minutes to check in just because you have to walk. A half a mile. I, mean, I guarantee you, man, if you're out of shape when you come out here, you're going to be sore by the time you leave. Because you have to walk a mile to the guard shack, and then walk a mile and a half to drop your paperwork off in the mailbox. And then after you're done, you have to walk back there and get it. But, uh... Oh, yeah. But... Appointment, appointment here was for uh, well anyways what am I trying to say uh, the appointment here is too close to the pickup time for that other load so if grocery supply takes two hours to unload me then the pickup for that other load is going to be late because it's about 45 minutes away it's gonna take about an hour to get there it's to the north humble is in north Houston kind of north uh, northeast I have to get back on the 69 and shoot up it or 288 69 yeah we'll see I don't know uh, it kind of it kind of pisses me off you know that because the cheapest fuel around here is the TA in Baytown and I don't have time enough I don't have time to get it I possibly could get it after I uh, load, but you know that's going to put another hour and a half on my on my drive. And it's going to be at least 30 minutes over there to Baytown. So I don't know. You know I don't know what I'm going to do. Is that is that 30 to 40 cents a gallon worth? You know another hour drive. 30 over 30 back. But we got to see what time we're going to get unloaded here first. So we'll talk to you guys later. Well, we finally got unloaded and we're going to be late, but there's the uh, Astro Stadium right there. We're going past. And jump on the uh, 69 and head it north. We're going to be about 30 minutes late for our appointment time. Because of grocery supply. Well, you know, they have a lot of trucks coming through there. I'm just glad they got me unloaded when they did. It could have been a lot worse. You know, 30 minutes isn't too bad. Hopefully they'll still take me. I, I'm not going to be able to get a trailer wash out. Of course, you know, it was uh, more of a frozen top load. So it's not very dirty. I just had to pick up some pallet pieces off the floor. Hopefully they'll be good with that. I mean, if not, then I'm just going to have to go get a truck and wash out. Just, they're going to have to load me later if they want to. But we're already going to be 30 minutes late. And uh, if you get a truck and wash out here in Houston, you're going to wait a while. I, already, I can already, already know that. So <laughs> I'm just going to go see if they can load me. It's pretty clean. So maybe we'll get it done. Hope you like
that quick clip I uploaded. I uploaded that today. So, talk about brakes, brakes and drums that we did over our extended time off. Peter Milton had the thumbnails on him there at Grocery Supply. Asked him if I could pick up his truck. Pretty nice setup. He had a uh, I don't think it was a 300 wheel base, it might have been 270 or 280. But pretty nice, pretty nice beat. Got some custom work done on it. Had a uh, split axle, maybe three foot. Three foot he was pulling. And, uh, so if you haven't seen that quick clip, go we'll check it out. Trying to get up 69, we gotta hit 59 more. And, uh, trying to get up there to uh, reload in humble. So, it's up north a little bit. Alright, well, we got loaded. They weren't too bad about it. A couple hours, I guess. I had to wait about an hour and then they had me loaded within two. So, I mean, not too awful bad considering I was 30 minutes late. And, uh, but I really don't have some time to spare because I got over 600 miles, just a little over, probably about, total it was 615, but right now I'm showing a little over 600, but we're trying to get out of Humble, out of the Houston area, and uh, we got a ways to go because uh, we got I-45 and a couple of miles up here, and then we got to, uh, come back down the other side of the highway to get fuel because that, that petroleum wholesale is probably the, well it is the cheapest fuel around here. I mean, besides the TA in Baytown, I don't have time to go to the TA in Baytown, so I'm just going to get some fuel there at the petroleum wholesale in the woodlands. get up 45 that's going to be our route 45 to uh 20 287 to 20 uh, come up there south of lubbock it goes to the uh, plainview walmart dc that's going to be our route going up there but it is a long drive and i do need some fuel and uh Anyways, talk to you guys a little bit. Right, coming in on the south side of Fort Worth. Sorry about the bugs. Coming in 287 North. seen on the bugs on the windshield I'm sorry about the bugs but uh, uh we made it as far as outside of Wichita Falls we stopped at the uh, of course the Texas best again Texas best barbecue truck stop it is now a pilot Sorry about the blurriness, but uh, yeah, they built a uh, extra parking lot over there, and you know people can park in the front right there too. There's room for about six six trucks plus this one long row at the entrance, so it makes it a lot better. I'm glad they built that extra parking over there to the left. And now they're starting to uh, make meals after they close, so I just went in there and I knew I wasn't... I didn't get the sandwich that I wanted because I usually get the Texas... I forget what it's called, the Texas Giant or something like that. Uh, barbecue 
sandwich. But they were closed, but they still do offer, they're, they're now making some uh, barbecue sandwiches and some brisket meals that they put on a uh, shelf, you know, if you want to uh, get that after they close. And I was happy they put that out because, you know, I was looking forward to getting something, getting some uh, brisket or barbecue. I was going to get that, like I said, that big barbecue sandwich, which is my favorite. I usually get the uh, brisk, the chopped beef brisket and um, the jalapeno sausage, which is a good combination. But while I'm getting on here, we're stopping for the night. Uh, of course, you know, we came from, uh, we started in South Houston there at the grocer supply. We unloaded there this morning. They were kind of late getting me unloaded. So I was late for my appointment, picking up there in Humble. And we also suffered the traffic jam of 4.35 o'clock, you know, trying to get out of Houston. And Humble, of course. And, uh, <clears throat> well, you know, I only had a quarter of a tank, so I had to get some fuel. So we stopped there at Petroleum Wholesalers. Uh, what exit was that? It's not not too far. I think it's one down from the Petro. I mean, from the Flying J. So one or two exits uh, north of the Flying J. And uh, but we had to go around the highway and come back on the uh, southbound side to get to it. But you know that was the cheapest fuel for me uh, through Com Data. So I went ahead and got that. But you know it was. I played hell getting out of that place because traffic was coming off the interstate and cars were coming down the service road and then had to go down and get turn around and get back on but the reason I'm doing this clip is because you just gotta you just got to now I could have drove I did not have no, enough time to make it to that Walmart and play me I would have had like 45 minutes. I would have been 45 minutes short. Now I could have pushed myself. I could have pushed myself to get to the last town before Plainview and shut down, you know, with like 10 minutes left, 20 minutes left. I would have been an hour away from the Walmart. And my appointment's in the morning. Not real, real early morning, but I decided to go ahead and stop about three and a half hours short. Reason being is because I can do a 7-3 split. I can, I can put seven hours in, get up in the morning, three and a half hour drive. I'm going to be probably a little bit late, maybe 30 minutes late getting to Walmart, uh, depending on the traffic. And um, But I was going to be late anyway, regardless. I mean, even if I would have drove, you know, till 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning and uh, stopped, I would I would have still been late after I had after I did my break. So I like to just stop. You know, I like to just stop at 10:30, 10:40. Uh, give me some barbecue that way. At you know 10:30, 11 o'clock at night, I know, you know, I know I'm going to uh, be able to get some sleep. You know, if I would have stopped at 2:30, 3 o'clock in the morning. It would have been harder to get any sleep because my appointments in the morning. So don't feel like you have to go, go, go and get as close as you can. Sometimes it's better to stop at a time at a time, you know, when you know you're gonna be able to get some sleep. Because you're gonna get there about the same time anyway. And that's the whole point of this. That's the whole point of the small clip. But anyways, I'm going to uh eat my brisket dinner it looks like it's some brisket and I don't know some mac and cheese and whatnot maybe some peas but I'm gonna eat that and hit sack I wish all of you all of you a good night and we'll see you in the morning look at what's rolling up here look at that setup man that's nice looks like he's got some uh, maroon fenders and maroon tanks he's got eight lights in the back well, good morning, people. I didn't have enough time to uh, left 
me just shy of uh, getting there. Let's see, I can log in. Finishing a 7-3 split left me just shy by about 10 minutes of getting getting to Walmart claim you, so I had to finish an 8, and 8 gave me a couple more hours, so that is what I'm left with. But uh, I don't even know if that gives me enough time to get back to the plant, but it's... I got up about 4.30 and I was planning on leaving at 5.30, a little after 5.30, but I had to wait another hour, so it's now 6, 6.30. We already did the pre-trip. Uh, got some coffee, so put a little bit too much sweetener in there, but it'll be alright. put the hammer down when we leave here and uh, try to get to that Walmart. Now that Walmart we're going to is usually a drop facility. It is a Walmart DC but I've never uh, unloaded there before. I usually just drop my trailer so hopefully they'll be cool with it. Because I am going to be a little over, probably a little over an hour late uh, for my appointment. But like I said, you know, usually there I just drop the trailer anyway. So Hopefully they'll be cool with it. The guard won't give me no flack over it, you know. But we did what we could, you know, between grocery supply holding me up in the morning, you know, and uh, that Houston traffic getting out of Houston at 4:30 and 5 o'clock, it just burnt my driving time right up. So. Life of a truck driver, you just got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you can, you know, that's all you can do. You know, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, run past my hours or over my hours just for a freaking load. It's not worth it, man. It's not worth your CDL, so. At least it's not to me, so we're going to try to, uh, we'll get it done, but we'll get it done legally. All right, we are here. We made it to the uh, Walmart DC in Plainview, and a lot of carriers that come here often, you know, they'll just drop their trailer, and we're one of them. So, you know, being a little over an hour late, no big deal. They just let me drop it. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, uh, we dropped it and we found one of our, I found one of our empty lease trailers that I latched onto and I'll take it. Um, when you come in here, they want you to, when you drop a load of, they want you to, uh, not Walmart, but the company I'm contracted onto, they want you to, you know, hook onto another trailer, an empty one, and take it to the plant. That's what we're doing. To get that done, but don't have a lot of time left today. I mean, the load might be ready when I get to the plant, but you know, it actually doesn't have to leave until tomorrow. So, I've got an air leak on this tractor somewhere. I need to, I didn't have time to do to look for it whenever I did the brakes and drums, but I'm gonna have to uh, find it and fix it because I have to do, do this inspection. I may have to get a windshield, I don't have to do it today, but I'm, I at least need to try to get that air leak found while, you know, I'm waiting on that load. 